Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Kelly Wilkness, and I'm here with Anita. Today is episode 278, House Rental. Is it for you? And you can find the show notes for today's episode at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 278. So if you haven't guessed it from the title, we're talking more about short-term, maybe even vacation rentals, sort of that Airbnb thing. So there, it's such a thing now. Like mm-hmm. I thought we should dive into it. In fact, as I'm recording this, my husband and my older daughter are on a trip in Japan staying in a really cool Airbnb in Tokyo. So it's kind of fun that we're recording this and they're there. And oh, I've that's, had, that is fun. Yeah. Isn't that fun? And I've had, and it's gorgeous. And I've had my own experience um, with a couple of different Airbnbs. And, you know, it's such uh, a part, it's like Uber, right? It's like a big part of the way people travel and experience other places now. And so I, we thought it was a good idea to sort of explore it because it's talking about renting your own house. Like, would you? Could you? Is that even for you? And some people embraced it, and they're they're making some nice cash doing it. Uh, but you know, there's definitely things to know. One of them is know thyself, of course, which in all things, and whether or not that would be for you, and whether or not it would make economic sense, and things like that other considerations and, you know, how much time you're going to be away from your own home. There's so many things that play into it, but we thought we'd run through some of those, um, so bigger topics, the personal exploration part of whether or not you'd Airbnb mm-hmm. and then uh, dive into, if you decided to do it, just giving you some good tips on how to prep your house for renting it. Yeah. And I know a lot of people in round top rent out their places for the antique show and our house in North Carolina, we bought it knowing that we were planning to rent it out. So that was kind of the plan all along. And there's a lot of rental houses there. There's a lot of people that have second places there and they rent them out and it's quite nice. Uh, We've been doing it now for a couple of years and it's, you know, we're not going to get rich off of it, but it certainly is enough to pay for, you know, a house payment and a lot of the expenses. So it's, it might. So I guess the thing to think about too, is if you have a house payment or if you're thinking about a second home, this might really help with that. So it's definitely something to think about. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's so, it seems so organized and orderly now. Like, you know, I guess, you know, in the years past, like, what would you do? Put like, you know, it in the penny saver or maybe a VR, what is that? Vacation. Well, I don't know that thing. people used to do the vacation rentals before. I think that's kind of a newer thing to do, at least here in the States. Yeah. It's a nice way to travel when, you know, if, if you are the rent or. Uh, it is. And, and a nice way to travel with your family because you have a kitchen and all of that and you have a lot more space if you're traveling with a bigger group. Well, that's something that we've, I've been doing this when I travel for a lot longer than we've been renting out our house. Uh, and yes, it is nice. Actually in Paris, we just rented out a room, but that was plenty and it was in a, such a fabulous area. And we had breakfast every morning with the host who actually was there and she was an opera singer and sang a lot in the apartment and we adored her. Catherine oh, was her name. So, so it was cool. like Catherine Deneuve. That's exactly who she looked like. Oh, and wow. yeah. So anyway, and her name was Catherine. Oh, so, so yeah. And then in Italy, we had the whole house and the kitchen. Anyway, I just, it's such a lovely thing to do when you're traveling. But so here's some things I just wanted to talk about in deciding, because we were trying to decide whether or not to do it when we were buying the house, because we knew we were going to need that income to really pay for it of the house in North Carolina. Uh, So we really had to kind of come to grips with the fact that other people are going to be sleeping in our beds. Other people are going to be using the kitchen and, you know, maybe someone's not going to be using a coaster. You're not going to be there too. (laughs) I know I I can be a Monica. I've been told I'm Monica with the coasters. So um, yeah. So uh, you really do have to be comfortable with not being in control because I, one of the things that really, I, I think the thing I dislike the most is that people don't bring the cushions in when they stay there and then they get rained on and then they get mildewy. And, you know, there's just nothing I can do about it because I'm not there. Uh, 
so, you know, they just kind of leave them out in the rain. But I mean, other than that, it's been, and the small fire, it's been pretty good. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Now, if, if she hasn't completely turned you off from the idea. So if, if anybody doesn't know what is Airbnb. So it's basically a website and there's an app, of course, where you can. Or VRBO. Uh, yeah, but mm-hmm. yes, but you're going to list your own property there and describe it and add pictures and all of that. And then there'll be other people looking to see if they want to come to your area for whatever reason or if it's business or pleasure and they may want to stay in your place. And then, you know, there's some exchange back and forth. And obviously the uh, companies that are hosting these websites, they make a percentage and then, you know, you also obviously are paid for renting out your home. And then there's, you know, the particulars. How do you get the key to someone and all those small details? But in general, this that's the way it would work. So you have to first get to the point where you know you'd want to try that. Well, the other thing I wanted to say is if you are, if your house is in an area where there's a lot of tourists that come, I'll bet there's a company that you could use to manage it for you if you did not want to do it. So we do use Graybeard Realty. They manage hundreds of homes in the Asheville area. And so they handle all of the little details because we live out of state. So if it's something, but you know, if it's your home that you live in full time, it's pretty easy just to do it yourself. You're just, you know, so we'll be going over some stuff that you need to do, but it's a lot easier to do, obviously. And you could even do the the housekeeping when people left. But, you know, that's another thing is that, you know, I think most people that do this have a housekeeper that that does the cleaning and that way you don't have to do that. And sometimes there's an additional fee for housekeeping and sometimes you can include it. But uh, I don't know, should we talk about the rates first? I mean, you would want to look on some Airbnb or VRBO for your area and see what other people are charging before you set your rate for one thing. And right. then that'll if, give, if you mm-hmm. decide you want to do it, you want to be competitive enough that you're getting people that are interested. You know, if it's if your place is twelve hundred dollars a night and somebody else is two hundred, well, you know, chances are you're not going to get a lot of calls. Right, and right. also, I guess it would depend upon uh, the geography as to what you could ask, and if there were certain events. Like in my area, I there are some families that I know that actually go away over Christmas, New Year, and they rent their houses out because we are pretty much a stone's throw. Actually, I'm like, you know, 10 yards from the Rose Parade route. And so you've got the Rose Bowl game, which is less than a mile away in the Rose Bowl Stadium. (laughs) They take over the flea market area. Uh, Which is, I don't get that I don't understand why they can't have that, uh, you know, on that same Sunday. But um and then obviously the Rose the Tournament of Roses parade is right here. So it's a really busy time in Pasadena and there are large groups coming. So I have known several families who have listed on Airbnb or VRBO and um, just taken their family on a trip and still made some money. But again, you need to get to the place where that is something that you're comfortable with. You have to think about all the ramifications of someone being in your house. And I can give you guys a little from. Anita's, you know, obviously done this and had people sleep over and they're on vacation and whatnot. I've had situations where uh, we have some filming that has done at the house pretty frequently. And um, at first I thought I was going to, I don't know about this. We'll try it out. We got approached and, you know, because the house is pretty unique and people wanted to film a commercial or something or some print work. And I thought, I just don't even know if I could deal with it. And I had p- different people in my house. And they're not even and- spending the night. They're just filming during they're the They're just day. filming. But there's mm-hmm. usually, you know, a, a fair amount of them. Um, Are there and the first coasters I just kept- involved? Excuse me? Are there coasters? Yeah. There- <laughs> there's- no, there's booties. But um, – <laughs> I would just go away for like the afternoon and leave leave poor Peter here to deal with it because I was like, I just don't want to see it. But then, you know, after it happened a few times and <laughs> nothing happened to the house. In fact, a lot of the times it looks better than after they left because they really do a nice job mm-hmm. cleaning up after yeah. themselves. I'm much more relaxed about it. And, you know, it is a, a great way to, uh, you know, have uh, some extra income and whatnot. And, you know, it's not all the time. We don't get approached, all, uh, you know, weekly or anything like that. So it's on occasion. So I've done that, but I still don't know if I could do the house rental situation where people are actually living in your house. So you have to do some self-examination. I, as to I'm whether not, you can. 
I'm not up to doing it in my house that I live in. I, mm-hmm. Because the mountain house, we knew when we bought it, we were planning to rent it out. So I really, you know, for example, we want to redo the kitchen, but I want to put some marble countertops in there. And I know you say they don't stain, but... Man, I'm a little concerned. Uh, yeah, well, okay. We won't go down that road today. <laughs> <laughs> we won't start that argument. But, <laughs> but you know, I'm kind of holding off because I don't want to get upset about damage to the kitchen. Right now, it's not been updated. So, I, you know, if something gets kicked or nicked or whatever, I, I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I noticed a big cut on the counter. I'm like, who cares? I don't yeah. even, you know, it doesn't even phase me. Right. In so, fact, you might be excited about it because it, then, if, you know, eventually it's like, there's no question, Kevin, this must be done. Like, what happened <laughs> well, here? he's not the holdup. It's, it's you know, that, that we're currently renting it now. But here's, here's one of the big tips I would suggest for you, especially if it's a house that you live in that you're renting out, is you need something called an owner's closet. So that was just for us. We just found the biggest closet in the house and put a lock on it. And that's where we keep our goodies. Now, I know a lot of people, that's where they lock up the liquor and the <laughs> guns and the ammo. And, oh, my uh, gosh. They're, um, but, you know, I've, I've heard some horror stories. Not, I think this is very rare where sometimes people break in. I mean, if they break in, into our house, all they're going to find is like our favorite pillows <laughs> and, uh, you know, that sort some of thing. Lavender sachets from Bistro Yeah, well, and my, my tea, you know. my tea um, carafe, because once you put coffee in it, you can't use it for oh, tea anymore. Go back from that. Well, because yeah, so I have to keep that locked up where they put coffee in it. But other than that, I mean, really, there's nothing of value in our owner's closet. So if you, if it's something like your grandma's jewelry, your jewelry, you might think about your box at the bank for yeah, that get sort a safe of thing. deposit box. Yeah. Yes, your for your safe deposit box, exactly. But uh, you know, other things that you really maybe your your nice silver or something, you might put that in the owner's closet if you don't want little things maybe to go missing or. And, and you know, we've had like weird things missing that, well, I don't really, it's not a big deal, but like the Tupperware, it's always gone. Like it's, they always, I think they have a little food left over. They take it with them. So you just have to say uh, that's, there's going to be some right. stuff like that. But I don't think they, people, most people I think that are renting out your house, they're probably pretty nice. You know? Well, and that, I don't, that's not, honestly, no, that's not a big deal. That does not upset me. I just kind of figure that's just part of the deal. You know, yeah. someone's going to have some food left over and they're going to go, well. I'm just going to use this, you know, it's here. Uh, so no, that's fine. But, you know, be prepared for that is what I'm saying. Some things like that may, that they think is not important, may uh, walk out the door. And I had a Santos that had a crown on it. And I think some little kid probably, it looked really cute. And I bet the parents didn't even know that the kid took it. It's that sort of stuff. So you just have to be chill with that. So if you're not, then maybe don't rent it out or put that stuff in your owner's closet. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. 
formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Right. So we talked about the competitive prices. Also, you're going to want to have some great photos of your house. And because, you know, you're going to be, that's what people are going to be able to judge it on, what it looks like in the camera. So you might want to even invest in having somebody that you know that has a good camera or getting yourself a good camera. Or if you're really serious about it, say you have decided, oh my gosh, you know, we're going to go to blank for three months and it would be great for us to rent out our house. Oh, yeah. Well, then maybe you want to get some, you know, invest in a couple hundred bucks to have a good photographer come over and take some pictures of your house. Or maybe you have a friend who's a real estate agent and they have one of those super duper real estate agent lenses and they could come over and take some photos for you. So you want to upload your photos, make sure they look good. Well, and- can we st- I mm-hmm. want to say something about the photos before sure. you go on to something else. The photos are what sell your place. So you really do want good photos. So look at your photos after you take them. If they're not good, it's really worth the money to pay somebody to do it. Because if the photos don't look good, you won't be able to rent it out or you won't be able to rent it out for as much. So they're they're really key. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, as we said, with the competitive pricing, and you might want to offer a deal if somebody's going to, if you want to go away for three months or a month or something like that, and someone can stay or wants to stay that long, you might want to work out some sort of deal to make it a little more enticing. And also add lots of description. I mean, think about it. If you were coming to a new place, even if it was for work, you're still going to have the evenings and you're probably not going to want to sit at home, you know, making, uh, you know, soup on this person's stove. You're probably going to want to explore the restaurant scene and things like that. So add a lot of description of the amenities of the house, even down to the decorating style. And talk about your neighborhood. You know, what's it near? Uh, How can they get some public transportation? Uh, You know, are there Ubers? And is it easy to get an Uber or a Lyft somewhere? What restaurants are around? Are there special events going on? So check into all that. Like, Position yourself as a concierge at at a hotel. Think about it like that. And so the more information you can provide, the more enticing your place may seem to be to a person who's reading about it online. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you also need to think not only concierge, but think about safety codes. Do you have rails on your stairs? Are there any safety hazards? Are the railings on your deck secure? Uh, You know, we ran into a situation where... um, you know, we, you have to have fire extinguishers so many places in your house and that is for rentals. And I didn't realize that, but Graybeard did. So they knew to, and they they put them in for us, but make sure you know what those codes are. So for example, if your house is older, you may not even have smoke detectors because they weren't required at one point, but now they are required for rentals. So you really need to make sure you have those smoke detectors and fire extinguishers and to check some other safety issues and make sure, you know, that it's safe for people to stay there. I often think to myself, who is the former lawyer in this relationship? Because <laughs> I'm like, make a list of restaurants. Talk about the nightclubs. You tell them where to go shopping. And he's like, get yourself a smoke detector. Make sure that test your fire extinguishers. Okay, so uh, let me, let me, uh, let me, wait, let me put my little lawyer, let me pick up my little briefcase for a second. I'm holding my briefcase now. Okay, you should buy, you should probably talk to your homeowner's insurance company and just make sure that it's a okay or if yes. you need to, you know, just let them know. Uh, because it's different than having, you know, yes. Aunt Pam 
come and stay for the weekend because she's a relative and a guest. Mm -hmm. But once money is exchanged, there may be something in your policy. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know everything. And we did check on that. Yes, I can't remember. Did you check? Yeah. Okay. Well, and just I can't. I just something. Well, I mean, our our uh, insurance company, we just let them know, mm-hmm. and our insurance company was okay with that. So I don't know if we have any right. extra coverage, so, but yeah, I just know that they- It depends on what kind of coverage you have. So you yeah. might need an umbrella policy. But we didn't want them to say, like oh, uh, we can't cover you because you're renting it out. We just wanted ding, to make sure Ding, ding, they- ding. It's always yeah. good to communicate. Very good. So yeah. So tell them that. And speaking of communicating, now, you know, this is something, again, up to the individual, like when we had the first- few filmings here. I did not want to see those people, right? I just wanted it to happen and then, you know, have them go away and, you know, thank you very much. But now I'm like, hey, hi. Oh my gosh. What do you know? Like, I love greeting them and meeting these new people and they're always doing something, you know, sort of fun and interesting. So maybe you want to be there when you're uh, renters come, you know, maybe you want to give them the the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Most of them, most of them are not. Face to face. Yeah, I think at VRBO, I think we've done them and you as the host. And that's another thing to talk about. You can accept or reject renters. If you do the VRBO or Airbnb, when someone applies, you can say yes or no to them. Mm-hmm. When you see, you know, if it says, right. hey, we I've only- a family of six uh, and four of them are under three, you might say no. Yeah. Or, or you know, I've only, dogs. I've only been arrested five times, you know, right. whatever, you know, you, you might want to, you know, so you can turn someone down. And so when, you know, so it's good that, and they usually provide some nice information about why you should rent to them. So that's, that's really helpful. And so don't worry that you have to rent to anybody because some people you might not be comfortable with being in your home. And yeah, okay. and then decide on if you're going to accept pets or not. Uh, mm-hmm. And then if you do, then you can do a a non-refundable pet deposit is, is the norm. Uh, and then you can also set weight limits on the dog or, or oh cat my gosh. or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Usually there is a weight limit, just like a hotel. Dogs over fifty pounds usually. Molly might have to start. Oh no, she can't. No, no, she's not. No, I mean, well, we. That's why it's we can't even take her on our vacations anymore. The only place that would there was only one place that would take her, and anyway, I don't want to get into that. But anyway, because she's just a big dog, most hotels won't take her. So yes, even though she's very well behaved. Well, if you if you decide to go forward, I mean, obviously this is your house. You can pull the plug. You know, I mean, obviously you don't want to take the people's reservation and then to be like, nah, I don't think so, you know, as they're flying to your location. But once you've decided, yes, uh, you may want to be there to greet them. And, you know, that obviously that's not required, but you might, you might. Uh, Or you leave a box mm -hmm. with a key like Peter and Ava, you know, there was some, they had some some really great, uh, very prompt exchanges with the, uh, I was a girl, turned out to be a girl, but I don't, I don't know if they knew that then when they rented the Airbnb in Tokyo. And, you know, even though there was clearly some sort of language barrier, but, you know, she could communicate in English and they made their way. It was so fluid and easy. They got Mm -hmm. there, you know, after an 11 and a half hour flight, they went to the box. Everything was as she said it would be. They put in the code. She had a little fresh, um, um, like little cakes and pastries for them and waters in the fridge. Ava said the bed is so comfy and they are having a ball. And Airbnb worked out great for them. Obviously, you know, we are the rentees, right? Not the rentors uh, in this situation. But here is, it was Ava's graduation present. That's what she wanted to do, have a life experience. And I couldn't go. We all couldn't go because Laura's in school and all of that. So what a wonderful experience for her to be able to travel with her dad. But had we had to get two hotel rooms, it would have been beyond, you know, what we've been able to afford for a graduation trip like that. So this way they got an Airbnb. They each have their own room, shared bathroom, little kitchen. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just such a great thing for travelers. And um, yeah, I mean, so some other things you can think about for your house besides the – Safeguard things that apparently I've been focused on. Well, that's good. To, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all good but but the other thing is usually I I know and I know somebody else that rents out her home when she, for various events in her hometown and she cleans out her refrigerator. With our house in the mountains, it's 
you know, we're only there a few weeks out of the year. So we do, when we leave, we clean out the refrigerator. So that's something just think about and maybe VRBO, I don't know if they make you clean it out or not, but that might be something that you have to do between people coming. And that's a pain if you have a very full refrigerator. As I said, they could be in the back and we could still be here. I don't know. Maybe I'll be the little old lady from Pasadena in, you know, (laughs) 50 or 60 years and I'll have like this whole train of, you know, Airbnb people coming and going to, you know, keep my life full. I don't know. Well, one of the things you're probably going to want to do if you do that, Kelly, is to have a house rule sheet that you post in the kitchen or someplace. And that's something that that we do. And it's just kind of some things like, you know, if you use the grill, you know, you just use it in the driveway, just any kind of special rules that you, you know, want people to follow, you know, like, bring the cushions in, please bring the cushions in. If you're not using them, you know, from the deck, something like that. Or, and then also that's where you're going to put your Wi-Fi password, the name of the Wi-Fi, the password. You definitely need that on there. And, uh, you know, then any other kind of special information you want them to have, like, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what else you might, but yeah. Oh, this, the toilet, you have to flush it twice or something. I mean, I don't know what any kind of special instructions you want to put there. And then we actually keep our garage door openers there. Although someone was telling me that the neighbor told me that nobody else else uses, that's how they know when we're there because our car actually goes in the garage. So Nobody else seems to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could make yourself a little guest guidebook. You could have the Wi-Fi password and sort of just how to navigate your home. You know, that will save headaches for you and and any other people. You know, Anita's situation in North Carolina sounds like a slightly different than doing an Airbnb or VRBO because she has this other company that's sort of like a middleman in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but the house of- rules you want either way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying as far as if anything is going on, you know, you're probably going to be the one that's being contacted with these other companies and stuff. So. So the less questions that, that can be out on the table and that you right. can answer them in a home guide or something like that, I think that's terrific. You might also want to just leave out a little basket of toiletries. Like Ava was telling me she was so impressed because they brought shampoos and all this stuff. And she said, she had all these Japanese shampoos for us, Mom. Oh. It's so great. So just, you know, all those little touches. I mean, if, if it's <laughs> particularly if it's something that you think you want to keep doing, I mean, you probably get a rating as a rent rentor, right? So, you know, obviously if you want to keep doing it and that could could be a nice source of income for some people, if you're able to do it, you know, with some sort of frequency, go the extra little mile, get some flowers, you know, leave a good oh. charging station, stuff like that. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. 
Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually, our friends out there have an amazing, amazing house. And it's he's a builder, so it really is a quite an incredible place, an outdoor deck with a with a outdoor fireplace. It's it's really just a, a show place. And their house, I think, is the top rented house uh, from Graybeards. And the funny thing was, th- several times they wanted to come back in their house, but it was rented out so much they couldn't get back in. Oh my God! So you do have to, you know, make sure you, you- don't want to get too popular. You know. Well, yeah. Well, except that they said it was just too hard to turn the, the money away. And the other thing is whether you do it yourself with VRBO or use an agency like we do, we have to a year ahead select the time that we're going to be here, be there because otherwise it books up because we had some time in the summer. We waited too late and we couldn't go when we wanted to because it was already booked. So make sure that you, you know, carefully define the times that it's available. And if it is a second home, make sure you get your rental in there before anyone else books. Well, I hope you pay attention to all those rules when you get there, Missy. <laughs> Bring those what, cushions inside. House? Yes. The cushions, the cushions, that's it. Your own rules. Okay. So we, as we said to you, we are now doing listener questions or comments or mail uh, almost in every episode because we figured, why wait? Why we make all these people wait so long to hear their questions being addressed and to ring in on them? And then, you know, certainly if you're, if you've given us a question, I do have it in my little special listener question book and we will get to it. So don't fret on that. But we have one today from a Christy. That's our friend Christy at the Starfish Cottage blog. Hi, Christy. She's so, so lovely. So she she's wondering, Is all white bedding boring? No. No. It's it's clean and fresh looking and beautiful. I love all white bedding. I love all white bedding too. And you know, I think that's what people, that's what they yearn for. They say, oh, the hotel bedding. It's the hotel look. You know, I think that you really can't go wrong with that. You know, maybe I would assume if you're doing all white bedding, I mean, it, there might be something else going on, like that. Maybe there's some sort of do not even a maybe duvet, a but bolster maybe like, in a different color. Yeah, well, maybe you, could, you have something at the you, foot of the bed or something like that. But you could, but still you don't do have to. White. Yeah, but I love that look. I mean, I love the clean, fresh. In fact, I think most of my beds have white bedspreads or maybe a white uh, at the farm. I have a white linen vintage sheet over, and then there's a white dust ruffle on the beds. And then I just put a colored, a duvet at the foot of the bed that has some color and then a pillow with some color. And that's kind of the way I go with most of my beds, just a color in the duvet folded at the foot and maybe uh, some shams. And, but sometimes I just do all white or Mm -hmm. maybe just a colored, um, a bolster with some color. But I think even if you want all, all white, that's just a beautiful crisp, 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 clean look if you no, want it's that. so inviting i mean when you think about it, it's just like think about like pulling back all white batting and like sliding in like that is so nice uh, really i i think it's it's pretty spectacular i don't think it's boring at all christy and you could do a little pop here if you wanted it would, and it's so easy i mean christy lives in florida right so all white batting is working for her year round and it really could work anywhere. I mean, everybody's sort of went to right, right? So, I mean, it could work anywhere all year round, but it, say at you know, the, uh, in the winter months or around the holiday time, if you wanted to add in like some sort of maybe a velvet quilt folded at the mm. bottom or something oh, like that. Something dreamy. Just, yeah, that's just luscious. And in the summertime, maybe you go to a lighter shade if you just wanted to bring a little color in. Also, just playing into what we've been talking about today about renting out your house. I mean, if you have all white bedding, I mean, that is A, appealing for someone to see, but also really easy to clean. You don't have to worry about, you know, if you throw on some OxyClean pods or something like that, you don't have to worry about fading any 
uh, patterns or colors or anything. And so it might be a great way to go, particularly, you know, if you decide to go down that road and rent your house out. And thanks so much for joining us. Remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. So until next time.